All right, what is up, Hustle family? So this store, I have never gone into and recorded. Um, we're a little ways out of town, about 45 minutes to an hour from home. And this shop is actually more of a reseller store. Um, it's not a thrift store. It's not a consignment store. It's, it's really interesting, actually. Um, this guy bought the store from a reseller couple a few years back and he's just kind of kept it stocked he gets a lot of new old stock inventory um, a lot of just new inventory as you know in general uh, and he has a lot of these collectible knickknacks toys action figures uh, as you'll see here i do fix the camera angle for you guys i apologize about the camera angle for this store as I, I was paying a lot of attention to all these new vintage action figures that he got. I was extremely excited, and I do find a couple. You will see that we grab a couple off this shelf, actually, right over here, uh, which I'm going to go to next. Now, um, on the very bottom, there's a little treasure there hidden, and I only bought two of the three. There was three things there that I should have bought and I only bought two, which I kind of regret now. Next time I go up there, I'll probably see if they, uh, or if he still has it. But if you see on the bottom shelf, you can see on the right there, there's a Godzilla, and there's kind of three Godzilla figures there. Now, pretty much everything on this shelf was marked like 40 to $80, and I do move on and come back to it, but when I come back, I actually grab two of those Godzilla figures. I wrote them off at the beginning because everything on the shelf was super expensive, but he only wanted $5 a piece for those on the bottom. And as I kind of went around the store, he says, I'll give you an additional 25% off any of those action figures on the shelf. So at that, I had to buy them. We picked them up, and the Godzilla will sell for uh, about 65 and the other one, the Destroya Godzilla, I believe is 50, but I'm gonna post those pictures when we get to it. So, kinda looking through the books. Now, I did skip over a Harry Potter book also um, that I come back to. Really funny story about the pricing on that um, and how I actually got it for a quarter of the price that he was asking for it. So, we're gonna come back to that as well. Just kinda looking around the store, getting a feel for what he has, what's new in the store. Uh, whenever I go into a store, I always make two or three passes. I'll make my initial round around the store, uh, see if anything just pops out at me. And I generally do this because there's been a number of times that I'll go into a store and I'll see something on the other side of the store and I'm like, oh, that catches my eye, but I want to go through, you know, I want to section through the store and just kind of look at everything. And by the time I get over there, another reseller's already grabbed it. So I make it a point now to make a quick trip around the entire store right when I walk into a store just to make sure if there is one of those items that's like you never see this item it's really rare or collectible or it's new old stock you know it's something that's highly desirable and also very well known as a bolo brand or something you want to look out for you know any reseller that comes in the store is gonna they're gonna gravitate right to it and they're gonna grab it so I try and make sure and, and I encourage others Make a quick round around the store, and you'll be surprised the stuff that you find that possibly if you wait, you know, you're going to walk around and you're going to see it. How many times have you walked around a thrift store or a resale store and you see something in someone else's cart, and you're like, man, I know that's money. But you can't. You can't get it, of course, because it's, it's already in their cart. Well, you know, if you had made that initial round around the store, you know, it's, it's a good possibility that, that you would have ended up with that item instead. So... Looking at the DVDs, looking at the video games, uh, a lot of old like RPG, PS2 games, a lot of old GameCube games, all those are going to be worth quite a bit of money. Um, he had $5 a game, so I was kind of thrown off by that a bit, because he had $5 for a brand new PS4 game, $5 for a really old PS2 game that wasn't worth anything. Really weird pricing, so I didn't pick up any video games. But I did kind of browse a little bit more around the store, uh, and in a moment here we will go over everything that we got at this store.
Okay, so we're done in there. Really interesting experience at the end. Um, at the end, I grabbed this Harry Potter book, and there was no price on it. There's no average price for books in there. Uh, and I asked him how much he wanted for it, because that's the last one we need um, to make our set. Now, we can sell a set of seven for $75, and we can sell it all day long. Um, and he said he wanted $20 for it. I was like, there's no way in hell I'm going to pay $20 for a book where if I get all seven, I can sell them for $75. That's just not going to work. So pulled up Amazon and he matched the lowest price for me at five bucks. So I, I paid five bucks for it. I'll do that. Uh, and then I got these Godzilla toys. So I got this guy for five bucks. I got this guy for five bucks. And they are top 10%. They're right at the top of the 10% for the toy category. Um, but I paid five bucks a piece for them, which is crazy. He wanted 20 for the book and five for those. I'm gonna get um, 59.95 easy for each of those. So 60 bucks a piece. And then I picked up this Sopranos game. It's brand new. Um, and because I can sell new toys on Amazon, I paid $2 for it. And I should get about $23.38 for it. Shipping will take probably nine bucks. Um, so, you know, probably about 10 bucks profit there. So all in all, about $130 profit, not counting the Harry Potter, because that's going to go in a set and be separate. So about $130 profit for the first stop. And we have uh, two or three more stops. Two thrift stores that I'm definitely going to hit up. One store that I saw driving in that looks like they just opened and they said like 20% off toys, puzzles, games, and books. So I'm going to hit that up too, but let's get to it. Okay, so walking into the next thrift store here, and I know on the last one the Sopranos picture I linked said out of stock. That's because it literally sold overnight, so it's it's already gone. Um, I did put it at $19.99 as someone came in that evening with a cheaper price. So I was like, hey, $19.99, I just want it gone. Paid two bucks for it, uh, and it sold within three or four hours. So uh, we're in the next thrift store now, and if you do watch the videos, you know that I've been in this one before. However, the last time we were here, there was another picker couple that had already gone through everything. They had been there like an hour, um, and there was just no profit to be made. However, this time, this time we made out, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys here. I'm gonna be putting the pictures up as we go. We made out on these books. We did great. Um, this one right here, that guy, I'm just gonna put it in the cart because that's one that uh, I'm actually buying for our collection. These guys here though, we paid up $8 a book, which is more than we usually pay at any thrift store, um, but they were 50 to $60 a piece, okay? And this one coming up, Forensic Toxicology, pick it up here, look at that price, okay? We're gonna get 80 bucks for this book all day long, really good rank, textbook season is coming up. Uh, and this one I did end up putting back just because of the condition. Could have listed it used acceptable, but at that point, I'm only getting $8 for it. I'm paying $1.50. Not really worth it, right, at that at that point. So um, we've had some big scores on games here before, so I'm quickly going to look through their games. Uh, we don't really find anything in their games today. Um, again, mainly looking for those old, like, uh, RPG games, the old GameCube games, and they didn't really have much today, which is okay. Uh, we will move on. So when it comes to collectibles, um, I'm looking for some of the nice old wooden picture frames will sell very well. Um, I'm also looking for Ray Dunn ceramics. Um, here I spot this old Chicago Bulls hat. Um, if it had been in better condition, maybe been a little bit more uh, vintage, a little bit older, uh, I would have grabbed it, but I passed. Uh, looking at this helmet, Bell motorcycle helmets sell very, very well. Um, and at $10, if that had been a better model, uh, maybe a better size, I probably would have snatched it up. So looking for hats here, uh, one of my best sellers on hats is old Caterpillar hats. So like the Caterpillar excavation equipment uh, or cat hats, especially ones that'll say like Cat Western States. Um, easily you can find a $50 plus Caterpillar Western States, like a trucker style cap. Those sell really, really well. Um, so going through here, now this is more just the knickknack aisle. Sometimes you can find uh, like, I don't know, brand new sewing patterns or brand new quilting patterns. Um, I thought these were little mini lanterns at first. I pick them up, I realize they're just candle holders. Um, 
like little tea light candle holders, so I, I passed on those. Again, I don't really do eBay anymore, so I'm more looking for uh, either new old stock merchandise that I can sell on Amazon or used merchandise that I can sell on Amazon. Or just, you know, if I find something that's really, really cool, I will list it on eBay or Mercari, but I have massive hesitations. Check out the price for this guy. Super excited. Hopefully it works. I did list it at um, $65, which undercuts the lowest price by you know a pretty good amount. They wanted five bucks for it, so five dollars to sixty, it was worth the risk for me. Um, so I did go ahead and grab it. Why not? Five dollars, right? All the buttons clicked just fine. There was no stickiness or resistance. They all had their click in them. The trigger was good. So um, I was like, you know what? Let's take a chance on it. So I listed it as uh, used good as there was no chips or cracks or anything, but I didn't want to list it as used very good because it just, I, I just didn't. So it uh, kind of comes down to personal taste at that. Uh, when it comes to books, people are a lot more strict. If it's a very good condition, you better not have page wrinkling or highlighting or writing. Um, if it's, you know, you if it's got, you know, like warping or some damage, you better list it as used acceptable. Uh, but when it comes to things like that, I generally always list them as used good. You know, if, if there's an acceptable condition electronic, I'm not even going to pick it up because if there's obvious outer damage, who knows what mess you have on the inside of that. So. Um, I only pick up electronics if they're in used good condition or better, and I generally always list them in good condition. So, anyways, um, going through here, I look down there because some of the Frisbee golf discs can be worth some good money. Uh, I look over here, I find something that's really interesting. Uh, not those guys, I was looking at these guys for uh, myself, didn't grab them. But there's a Colligan water filter. I do want to mention on that the bulb head brand or as seen on TV brands, stay away from those. Vero complaints like no other. So bulb head brand, no go. Okay, what's up guys? That was uh, absolutely awesome. We're going to make about 70 bucks from that uh, joystick. Make about 80 bucks from that fundamentals of, I believe it was toxicology book. Um, we make about 40 a piece from those two Astro City books. So that's what almost $300 in profit, especially with the other couple of books that we grabbed. So about $300 in profit for about 40 minutes worth of work, probably closer to 30 minutes worth of work. So that brings us up to what was the other one? Uh, the other place was what about 120 profit. So that brings us up to about $520 in profit. Uh, on the day so we got uh, one more thrift store and one more um, I, What I think is a thrift store, so let's go ahead and go hit those up Alrighty, so walking up to the next thrift store here and We did really good in this one So I'm gonna start putting the pictures up on the screen as I, I know usually what I do is I will show you guys putting them into the cart um, for some reason, I don't know if I didn't hit record or what happened here, um, but all we get is this little blip of books that you're going to see coming up, and I, I still put it in the video because I want to show you guys, and blip like that. I don't know what happened, so I'm going to start putting the pictures of the books and the prices that we got here um, up on the screen as we look through the store. You know we're going to go down the board game aisle because of the jackpots we always find and I do find a game here um, that should come up on the screen it was like a little uh, puzzle game maybe it was the next thrift store but we find this nice puzzle game that also like the Sopranos game already sold um, so I did look up this guy right here worst case scenario not worth it about $17 it was a bigger box kind of heavy shipping would probably eat up 12 to 14 of that so it just wasn't worth it um, I find this old Toy Story toy um, super nostalgic. I don't think it's worth much. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments if you looked it up, because I didn't look it up, and I'm kind of regretting that at this point, because some of those old toys are money, especially around Christmas time. Nostalgia kicks in, you know, someone that unwrapped that toy as a kid, they're going to buy it for themselves again, or they're going to buy it for their kids. So uh, we're going to go and look over in their collectibles case, which doesn't really have much today. Um, 
couple of nice handbags. There were a few video games on the other side, um, but nothing that really jumped out. There's some PSP games, really high rank. Some had some good prices, but the ranks on them were just, you know, 100,000 in video games I'm not that interested in. So, uh, looking at their watches, they had a Garmin system in there that was kind of cool. They had a Fitbit in there. They had an, uh, a pellet rifle there that you see. So a lot of big variety of things, but nothing that we ended up getting. So just going to kind of browse around. Uh, we like, we always check the video games. We always check the tools. Uh, we always check the electronics. There's another section in here that has board games. So we're going to check that out as well. Um, but all in all, making sure we hit every section and making sure we hit every section a couple of times. Um, we're also going to go look at the sporting equipment for helmets or uh, workout material, workout um, items, gym equipment, things like that. Really, really hot right now, especially with all the stay-at-home orders. Um, we saw this guy, Book of Mormon on CD, does really well, but without a barcode it looked like something that maybe someone just threw together so if you find one that actually has like an ISBN barcode um, or an EAN UPC if you find one that has a barcode scan it there's a good chance it's worth some money um, the Book of Mormon on on audio CD on cassette tape and even on vinyl record sell very well and usually for a good amount of money too All right, uh, about 45 minutes. We took a little bit longer in there, um, but we will come out after you've seen all of the pictures, about 220 gross profit. So that bumps us from 520 up to 740 on the day. Now, granted, if you've been watching the videos, you know that this one with the glare, I don't know if you can see with the glare, we're about an hour away from home. So we drove way out. Last time we were here, I know you guys probably saw the video. There was another uh, picker couple that beat me here by about half an hour and scanned through everything. It wasn't the case this time. This time, I came out the winner and we got all the good ones. So uh, we're at about $700 gross profit for the day, and we are just going to keep on trucking as it's only about 1 o'clock. All right, so I think I'm gonna call it a day. Um, that was the last thrift store I think we're gonna go in. That makes about four for the day, so that's pretty good. If I can get the glare out of here. Um, pretty good, four on the day. And in the last one, we found the board games really saved it because the books, only we only found about $20 in books, but we found uh, about $75 in board games. So pretty good. Um, we're going to finish the day off right at about $800 gross profit, which will translate into about $475 to $525 net profit. So $800 on the day. I'm going to call it a day. If you guys saw something that I missed, 
leave it down in the comments below. If not, I will catch you next time.